I think we have a clubhouse leader when it comes to being the realist when talking with the media that covered the San Francisco 49ers, and it's Charvarius Mooney Ward. Man, when that guy talks, he doesn't care. He's got no filter. He's going to say what he's going to say, and I absolutely love it. He's actually a great interview because of that. He just gives you off-the-cuff answers. You can tell he's not thinking about being media trained or whatever. He just says what he's thinking. And I love that when players have that confidence in themselves that they don't have to sugarcoat anything they say. This is just what it is, and this is how it is. And that's why when you ask guys like Mooney Ward about their upcoming contract um, and wanting a contract extension, he gives you really quality answers. And it's kind of refreshing, you know, that it's not PR speak. It's just like, this is what it is. These are the, this is the situation and this is how we're going to let it play out. So Charverius Ward, great interview. Take a listen to him talking about a bunch of different things, but I really perked up when he was talking about Renardo Green. I really like what he had to say about him. Take a listen right here. I'm doing DB drills, everything I need to be doing um, leading up to, to training count. So I think I'll be ready. They want to count. Was it to play that second half of the season with the injury? You said how? How challenging was it? Uh, I didn't had this injury for like almost four years now, uh, dating back to when I was in KC. So, I mean, it just started to get a little worse over time. You know, the um, the grind of, of a football season. So it started to wear on my body a lot. So, I mean, I just felt like I had to get it done. I mean, I was balling the second half of the season. So, you know, it really didn't take much of a toll on me. Seemed like it. When you said it got worse. I mean, was it like you mentioned you're playing well? Like, yeah. Did it get more difficult just to play through it? Uh, just like my day to day life, like just sitting down, my little back started to hurt. Uh, driving the car, sitting in the car for a long period of time, my body was just aching, just doing that. And once you know my back started to hurt, I'm, I was I'm only like mid twenties. It felt like I was 35, 40, damn near. So I had to get it done when that started happening. What uh, we're obviously at. A, uh, great season last year. What are you looking to improve, or what aspects do you think you, you can get better? Uh, capitalize on a lot of missed opportunities I had last year. I feel like I could have had almost 10 interceptions last year. So I want to just, uh, you know, make more plays, try to become more of a leader, more of a talker. I'm kind of like the old head of the DB group now. So, you, yeah, I just come more of a leader and make more plays, be better than I was last year. What are your initial impressions on the young guys coming in? Uh, I haven't been with him too much because I've been rehabbing, but um, just watching film, I think um, Renardo, that's his name, right? Renardo. <laughs> I didn't know if it was Renardo or Ricardo, but uh, I know he can play. I know he can play just by like uh, watching film. He's super sticky in coverage. Um, I think he's smart. Um, once he get a little more reps under his belt, I think he's going to be a baller for us. Mooney, you know receivers. What, what do you think of Pearsall and Cowing, the two rookies so far? Uh, Cowing's super fast, like real, real fast. Um, Ricky, he's shifty, um, got good moves, um, good hands, um, create a lot of separation. Um, so I think th those guys are going to help us out a lot this year, for sure. What the Nick Sorensen kind of defensive coordinator is going to be like? You has kind of set a tone right now? Uh, you said, do I have a feel? Yeah. Oh, well, Nick been around, you know, uh, for a while here in San Francisco. So, I mean, I think it's going to be status quo. We're going to be the same defense. Probably, hopefully, you know, fly around a little bit better. Um, and try to get over the hump and win the Super Bowl. I think only only way we can get better is become a championship defense. We'd have been to the conference championship Super Bowl. We just haven't won it yet. So, yeah. Have you spent any time with Brandon Staley? I know he's spending most time with the DBs. Uh, like I said, I've been rehabbing a lot, so I haven't been with the coaches in a lot. But I know he's super smart. Um, seemed like a good coach, funny. Um, I talked to the, some of the other guys about him, about his coaching style. They say um, they like him, so I'm pretty sure uh, I fit right in and, you know, have a good relationship with them. You've been on a Super Bowl winning team and you've been on a Super Bowl losing team. Yeah. Are there any intangibles, like in the mental approach to the game that you notice that were different in those two situations? I don't want to, I don't want to sound dumb, but what you mean by intangibles? Like, obviously, you prepare hard on both sides, but mm -hmm. were there any mental things that you noticed that were different last year as opposed to when you were on the Kansas City team where you won? Uh, I, honestly, I think we was the best team. We was the better team. They just, well, I wouldn't say better team. They were the better team because they won, but I feel like we had a little more talent, but they just had the best player in the NFL. So, I mean, they got it done. That's point bank period. Mm -hmm. 
going into the last year of your deal here, how important is this year for you? And would you like to get something done to, to stay around, or, or do you want to kind of play this out? Talking about a deal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd like to stick around. I feel like it's a good team. They love me here. I love you here. I uh, love all the coaches, love my teammates. But, uh, you know, I just let my agent handle it. That's the business side of things. I'm just do my job, go out there and ball, you know, put the pressure on them. You know, hopefully they give me a bag. If they don't, I know it won't be like any bad blood in between me and them. It's just like, it'll be a, a business decision, but I'm pretty sure they'll like to have me and I'd like to stay here for sure. Mooney, how excited are you to have Floyd with Bosa up front this year? Uh, Leonard Floyd, right? Leonard Floyd, uh, I think he a dog, man. I've been watching him a lot of his career with the Rams and the Bills um, in Chicago, too. I think he a dog. He can play. He seems like he got a lot of good energy, and a good energy by himself. Um, he play hard. He runs to the ball. So he hopefully it just make my job a lot, whole lot easier, you know what I mean? Um, well, he is eight, nine-year vet, maybe 10-year vet. So he an OG, so I know he going to get the job done whenever he in the game, for sure. Do you plan on going back home to do the rest of rehab during the 40 days off? Yeah, I'm going back home. I got to be with my family a little bit. Yes, ma'am. During the off season, how much, how life changing was that? Uh, I went to a lot of places. I went to Africa. Um, I feel like it's one of the best countries, best countries. Um, just to see our people over there, you know what I'm saying? It was, I don't want to, you know, I, I saw, a lot, saw a lot of black people over there. And uh, it just felt good to be around, you know what I mean? Um, and to see like how they live, you know, they don't, they don't have a lot uh, like we got in America. They don't stress about the things we stress about, like, you know, the fancy cars, clothes, and everything like that. They just happy, like, to get by every day, you know? So um, a lot of them was super poor, poverty, but, you know, their spirit was way up here, you know what I mean? So that's what I love about Africa. I definitely see myself going back over there to help out once I retire. And toward the latter end of my career, for sure. You know, I want to help my, I want to help my people out, for sure. Did any of that kind of help to put this season into perspective when you got you? Got the surgery done and deal with the injury. You just said you have goals that you wish you had have taken advantage of last season. And then to see that with a new perspective, did they help you to come into this season with an even broader perspective on what you need to do? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I ain't really. Be sure. Did they help you to come into this season with an even broader perspective on what you need to do? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I ain't really. Be sure. So I was a little winded. With that being that you went out and you saw that and you said it changed your perspective about things. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you've been through to get to this point, losing the Super Bowl, having the surgery, do you have a new perspective coming into this season on what you have to get done personally and then as a team? Uh, personally, it just taught me to be more grateful and thankful for everything I have. You know, um, NFL player, rich as hell, um, got one of the best jobs in the world, but I still kind of like stress about like small things that I shouldn't stress about. So it just taught me to be more grateful, more thankful for everything. Um, like I said a few seconds ago, like they don't have much, but shit, they spirit was like, way up here, you know, everybody had good personalities that was funny, that weren't complaining about nothing. So personally, it just taught me to be, like I said, uh, again, thankful and grateful. And um, this season, um, I kind of come from poverty too. I come from nothing. So um, I know I went all pro last year, pro bowl, but I don't want to um, become, what's the word, comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So it's just going to teach me how to grind harder and, you know, match what I did last year and become even, become even much better. I went to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Johannesburg, and, and uh, Cape Town. All three of them was a vibe. I love all three of them. Made some friends out there. I'm going to fly uh, one guy out here that I met out, met out in Africa to meet his daughter. She uh, she go to school in Denver. I think she go to culinary school, and he can't really afford to come out here. So, you know, I'm going to help him to come out here for sure. I feel, I feel good when I do stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. Thanks. Thank Hey, man, anytime you can get a vote of confidence from one of the veterans, I think that's a good thing. And obviously, Renardo Green being the second round draft pick that he was, there's a lot of high expectations for him. And when you kind of get into the tape, just kind of like Charvarius Mooney Ward said, was he's very sticky in coverage, meaning he is a press man dog. Uh, one of the reasons why he was one of my favorite prospects in this past draft class. Uh, one of the reasons why I talked about him as one of the most underrated prospects in this draft class because I thought he was the best, the best press man corner in the class and no one was talking about him and he's continuing to improve and, and show out and really be a quality player from all the reports that we've heard from OTAs and mandatory minicamp. Also in regard to Traveris Ward talking about his contract extension or potential contract extension. Again, it's just refreshing to be able to hear a guy be like, listen, we understand it's a business. 
if they want me back, we'll make it work. And if not, no hard feelings. It, it, it's a business. It'll play itself out and, and we'll go from there. And it's just like, yeah, uh, that you're right. 100%. Like we got to figure it out. There's obviously a lot of maneuvering to do with all the contracts. I mean, we just signed Christian McCaffrey to a two-year contract extension, previously signed uh, Jawan Jennings, Diamador Lenore is going to be up. Talano Hufunga is going to be up. Of course, Mooney Ward is going to be looking for a new contract. So a lot of people are going to be looking for paydays. So it's going to be really fascinating to see what happens at the end of next year. But again, I just thought, you know, Mooney's just a, a refreshing interview. He's just he's telling him like it is. And um, I love it. I love that about him. Uh, what did you guys think about what he had to say? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.